In our last videos, we've begun to deal with the canon of delivery, which is nonverbal communication. Uh, in the previous two videos we dealt with this, we talked about nonverbal communication, and we talked about how nonverbal communication uh, is, is carried through any of the five senses. We talked about some of the things that are typical of nonverbal communication, types of nonverbal communication. Uh, then we talked a little bit in that first video about delivery, on how we communicate through our smell, through our taste, through our touch. We talked about those things. Uh, then we had a video where we talked just about sound and how, or excuse me, just about sight and how we communicated nonverbally through sight. Now we're going to take just a little bit of time uh, and we're going to make this video all about nonverbal communication through sound. It is so important that we understand how to use our voice effectively. Our voice is one of the most powerful tools we have in public speaking. And while the words we say are important, that's the canon of style really, is the words we say. The way we say them, the canon of delivery, the nonverbal communication is also very important. We make lots of sounds and convey a lot of information through those sounds. We make sound, we use our bodies to make sounds. There are claps, there are snaps, there are stomps, there are taps, there are clacks, there are slaps, there are thumps. There are just all kinds of sounds that we make with our bodies. And we can communicate things like that through sound. Right? Just Quickly snapping your fingers can get a lot of people's attention. All right, everybody, listen up. Wow, that works pretty well. Oh, I'm full. It works. We communicate a lot of stuff with our bodies using sounds. But we also, of course, make sounds with our voice. <coughs> I'm going to talk about three aspects to ways we use our voice. I'm going to talk about vocal qualities. I'm going to talk about vocalizations and vocal segregations. <coughs> I'm not going to talk about coughing, but we do communicate non-verbally through that, don't we? First of all, let's talk about pitch. Pitch is how high or how low we make our voice. In general, when you're speaking, the higher pitched your voice are, is, the more emotional you are. Meaning, the more excited you are, the more happy you are, the more scared you are. All of these things are communicated through a high pitched voice. If you want to get people excited about what you're talking about, and you know what? In your public speeches, there are probably things in there where you need to get your, your audience excited about stuff. You need to raise your voice. You need to get them going. But there are other times when you want to lower your pitch because you want things not to be taken in an excited way, but to be taken in a calm, careful, authoritative, and collected way. You need to think about what you're doing in your speech. And whether a high pitch in, the, in a particular area is appropriate or a low pitch. Either one is okay, as long as you move between them fluently. In general, we consider somebody who doesn't vary their pitch when they're speaking, we call that person, we say that person is speaking in monotone. Nobody can pay attention to a monotone speaker. It's very, very hard. Why? Because you don't know which points are important, which points are logical, which are emotional. You just can't follow it. That's the problem with monotone speaking. Probably, as far as delivery goes, a monotone speech is one of the areas where often I will mark students down. Another of our vocal qualities is the pattern at which we speak. The pattern is the rhythm or speed 
that a person uses to talk. People who speak with a lot, with a fast patter, tend to be seen as as more excited. Uh, generally, happy and excited people talk at a very high high speed. Generally, nervous people slow down. That's not always the case. See, I used to know this dog who was one of our dogs growing up, and we would take that dog out hunting. And the dog would start running around, running around, running around, and it would see a barbed wire fence. And that dog had had experience with barbed wire fences. So instead of slowing down and maybe finding a way to negotiate that barbed wire fence without hurting itself, the dog would turn its head, close its eyes, and speed up! And hit it hard and fast to get it over with. I think people do that in their speeches sometimes, too. They know it's going to be hard to give a public speech. And so they just speed up to try and get it over with, and they don't do a very good job. The truth is you need to vary your pattern. There are times you need to slow down, and there are times you need to slow up, speed up. And you should think about it when you're preparing your speech. At this point, do I want to talk fast, or do I want to talk slow? The third vocal quality <coughs> is projection. Projection is the loudness or softness with which you speak. Projection is very important. Nobody would be able to get through a whole speech if they were yelling the whole time. But a person can project by pushing from their tummy from a muscle called the diaphragm, and pushing that air out and reaching to the back of the room. You need to make sure that whatever you're saying in a speech reaches to the back of the room to which you're speaking. And you can do it. Do you know any two-year-olds? Let me tell you about that two-year-old. Unless there's something a little different about it than most, that two-year-old is probably loud. And you know what? You have bigger lungs than they do. You've just learned to be quiet. And as Yoda said, you need to unlearn what you have learned. So those are the three vocal qualities. Pitch, patter, or pro and projection. The highness or lowness, the volume, or excuse me, the speed and the volume. Those are the three vocal qualities. We also have vocalizations. Vocalizations can be really good in a speech. They include the coughs, like I had been doing earlier. Now, those coughs were unintentional. They are just part of the presentation, uh, but I decided to leave them in because I thought they would make a good example now. But there are times when you can <coughs> clear your throat to show that you've been thinking. There are grunts. Groans, moans, sighs, screams, squeals, whistles, hums, clicking. So much stuff that we can communicate through sounds that we make. It's very ap appropriate to make those sounds. <sighs> There's nothing wrong with sighing to make your point. In fact, that's one of the cool things about public speaking, as opposed to like writing a paper. You can sigh. And when you sigh, it can communicate a lot. We also have vocal segregations. Vocal segregations are where little sounds, and sometimes even words that don't really have any meaning in the sentence, are sort of stuck in the middle of our sentences. We think of these things as ums, uhs, Likes, you know, I um, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, um, uh, uh. Sometimes, some people who have taught speech have told people they should totally get rid of all their ums, uhs, likes, and you knows. And if there are too many of these, it shows that the person has not prepared their speech, 
and that they have a practice. But sometimes, even if we have prepared our speech and we have practice, these can slip in because they're part of our everyday conversation and they're okay in slight moderation. President Obama, if you see him speak, uses a lot of others, and he's been able to use them effectively to make himself look thoughtful to a certain segment of the population. You might be able to use them in that way too. Sometimes they just show that you're considering something, that there's a reason for what you're saying. Other times they don't sound so good. And for a few people, certain swear words have begun to function as vocal segregation. This is terrible because in general, even people who swear think less of people who swear. So when you swear, people don't like you as much. And you need to keep that in mind. So we have covered nonverbal communication and the voice. We've talked about our vocal qualities, which are our pitch, pattern, and projection, our vocalizations, which are all the sounds we make, and our vocal segregations. This also finishes up our section on delivery, which is the nonverbal parts of our public speaking. We're going to be moving on, and we're going to probably start in the next video talking about invention. Invention is where we get our ideas for our speech, and how we put them together. So we'll start talking about uh, doing research for speeches. We'll start talking about where to get information, how to evaluate information, and stuff like that. So I hope you'll stay tuned. We are finishing up the canon of delivery now and moving on to invention.